Hi, my name is Debbie Kravitsky. I'm a registered clinical dietitian here at Mass General Hospital's Cardiovascular Disease Prevention Center. People often ask me how to know if their diet is balanced. Well, to include a balanced diet, you want to include a variety of foods in moderate amounts. And foods get broken down into three groups. We call these groups macronutrients. Macro, because they, we need them in large amounts. They're specifically designed to do their jobs, and they do their jobs well. And they include fats, protein, and carbohydrates. Let's review each one. Fats. We need fat in our diet. We need fat for thermal insulation and protection to protect your organs. There are two kinds of vitamins, water-soluble, fat-soluble. You need to eat fat, so the fat-soluble vitamins, which are namely vitamins A, D, E, and K, they need you to eat fat so they can get absorbed, digested, and utilized by the body. I don't know about you, but fat certainly makes my food taste better, and it will help you to stay feeling full longer. So I want you to think about where in your diet are you getting fat? Think about butter, and if you think butter, think margarines. Also nuts, and if you think nuts, and you're thinking butters, well then nut butters, like peanut butter, almond butter, these are all fats. And if you think nuts, think seeds, because they're also fats. Also, think about all the oils. All oils are fats. Almost anything with the word cream will be a fat. So sweet cream, sour cream, whipped cream, cream cheese, half and half, these are also fats. You can see it's a big group. Mayonnaise is a fat, gravy is a fat. And these fats provide you with nine calories per gram. That's important. We'll refer to this back in just a, fella, in just a minute. Protein are the building blocks. All the time cells are dying and need to be replenished, and that's the job of protein. Think about what you're eating and think about if you're including protein, because you want to include protein with each meal, at breakfast, at lunch, and at dinner. And we get protein from eggs or egg whites, egg beaters, from fish, chicken, and turkey, low-fat cheeses, lean meats, tofu, quinoa. These are all sources of protein. And protein will provide you with four calories per gram. Carbohydrates are the preferred source of fuel for all your organs. And carbohydrates, think about where you're getting these. And I'm going to guess that of any of the groups, this is the one you're going to know best because they include the breads, the cereals, the pasta, the rice, crackers. But also, don't forget, carbohydrates are also coming from fruit and vegetables. People don't often think of fruit and vegetables as carbohydrates, but yes, they are. And carbohydrates provide you with four calories per gram. That's important because it's a calorie game at the end of the day. If you take in more calories than you burn, what will happen to your weight? If you said go up, you've got it right. And coming in at more than twice as many calories per gram when you eat a fat, that plays an important role. So it's important to know how we manage weight so you can wrap your arms around this. So let me show you the energy equation. And you may have seen it many times before, but we're going to look a little deeper. And it goes like this. It's calories, or I might say energy, in minus calories out is your weight. So you take in more calories than you burn, your weight goes up and the opposite is true. Think about how we get calories in us. If you're thinking food by eating, you're totally right. We get calories in by eating, by food and also beverage. Calories out is influenced by many things. One is your metabolic rate. The calories required at rest for your heart to pump, your lungs to function, and so on. This is not a stagnant number. It's always in flux. 
So I don't know about you, but as I'm getting older, I don't get away with half as much as I did when I got, was younger because as we age, our metabolic dial slows down. Gender. Men have more muscle mass, which means they make more testosterone. And a pound of muscle make, burns two to three times more calories than a pound of fat at rest. So by virtue of the fact that men have more muscle, you rev at a higher rate than women do, you lose weight easier than women do. Unfair on every level if you ask me. Genetics, you inherited a certain metabolic rate, so at least you know who to thank. Now calories out is influenced by what you do to get through the day. And part of this is formal exercise. So people say to me, oh, I exercise, I walk my dog. But that's not it. The goal of formal exercise is to improve the function of your lungs and your heart. That requires intensity. So within a safe heart rate, you need to dial up the speed and dial up the incline. If you get on a treadmill, you dial up the speed, you dial up the incline, you dialed up the intensity. And that's what formal exercise is. But you wanna combine formal exercise with an active lifestyle. So you don't wanna to go to the gym and then sit the rest of the day. Sitting actually is the new smoking. So you need to get up, get up, get up. There are incredibly wonderful apps these days, either on your phone or on the, these watches, it will buzz you, it'll tell you you've been sitting too long, up you go, get your heart rate going, it's wonderful. Utilize these tools because you want to move. So you park your car a little further, you take the stairs instead of the elevator, you need to move. So you combine formal exercise with an active lifestyle or ADL. Now here we go. Knowing this will let you wrap your arms around it. Say you take in, in the course of a day, 2,000 calories. Your metabolic rate, that calories required at rest for your heart to pump, your lungs to function, this will eat up most of your calories. So maybe it was 1,600. And maybe you burned 400 calories in the course of a day. So if 2,000 calories come in and 2,000 come out, what happens to your weight? You're right it stays the same. 2,000 in, 2,000 out, weight stays steady. And then you say, you know what? It's the night. I'm eating too much at night. I don't want to give up my nighttime snack, but I need to lose weight. I need to do it. I have to. And so you do. You cut your nighttime snack, and you go to, it was 300 calories in your snack, and you go down to 1,700. Now, while technology's changed, we're still wired like cavemen. To a caveman who all of a sudden gets 300 calories less in the course of a day, that's like saying, whoa, things aren't plentiful here anymore. So your metabolic dial is adjustable so you, your body can survive what it's interpreting to be a sign of semi-starvation or famine. So your metabolic dial says, I don't need 1,600 calories to get by. I'm okay on 1,300 calories. Now what happens to your weight? 1,700 came in. But now 13 and 400, 17 also come out. And if 17 comes in and 17 goes out, what happens to your weight? Not a gosh darn thing. It stays steady. And people often will say, you know something? I gave up that nighttime snack. I miss it. Not even an ounce did I lose. My metabolism all screwed up. My body is weird. Forget about it. I miss that nighttime snack. Let's bring it back. Actually, let's make it a little more. And now they'll never reach their goal. So you start a weight loss program here. You want to see results, do you not? But that's not how we lose. So knowing this will let you wrap your arms around it. When we lose weight, this is how we lose. At the beginning, your weight might go up and down and up and down and up and down because you're asking your body to do what it's not wired to do. It's wired to hold on to fat. You're asking it to do the opposite. It takes time for your body to readjust. Stay the course, however. That dial can't help but let go. It will, and you will reap those benefits. People who quit too soon never get there. Make this a lifestyle, not a diet. Consistency, not perfection. That's the name of the game. So as you're losing weight, look for the signs that your body's getting ready to let go. Maybe you're getting more fit. 
Maybe within the same 35 minutes of your exercise program, you're now burning more calories than you did when you first started. How awesome is that? Maybe your body fat is coming down. Your mood is better. Your outlook is better. Your clothes start to get a little looser as you're getting more toned. Your your waist circumference starts to get smaller. Your cholesterol, blood pressure, blood sugars are all improving. You're just not checking. Stay the course. That dial can't help but let down, get let go, and it will, and you will see those results. It takes time. Slow and steady wins this race. Give your metabolic dial, your engine, a chance to readjust, and you will get there. Now, having said that, you might need to make a change and you might need to, and you definitely need to partner in this. So say you start at a certain body mass, at a certain weight, it requires a certain number of calories to maintain, it requires a fewer number of calories to promote a weight loss, to promote the weight to create a deficit to promote the weight loss. Now you lose weight, which is great for you. You now have few, less of a body mass. It requires even fewer calories to maintain and even fewer calories to promote, to create the deficit to promote the weight loss. Hopefully, it takes care of itself. Hopefully, in the same 35 minutes, you're burning more calories than you did when you first started. And hopefully, I absolutely, you will have a dietitian who's going to show you in just a few minutes how you can eat more for less. So keep an eye on it. If your weight loss progress comes to a screeching halt, you might need to change your exercise routine a bit or make sure that you're tracking your intake and that you have an accurate understanding of what it is that you're eating because you might need to make a change there as well. Now you know about weight loss, um, let me talk about those carbohydrates because that is an important piece that many people have misconceptions about. And today we're going to zoom in on the role of carbohydrates. So carbohydrates consist of two groups. They consist of sugars and they consist of starches. Sugars taste good. We used to say they don't give you a lot of nutrition. We called them empty calories. Now we understand a lot more than that. We understand the impact that sugar has on arterial health. As sugar intake goes up, obesity goes up. As sugar intake goes up, diabetes and mortality from heart disease also go up. So it's important to be mindful of sugar in your diet and where the food sources of sugar are. So let me broaden the net as to what I mean when I say this word sugar. It includes sugar itself. It doesn't matter if it's white sugar, brown sugar, raw sugar, organic, turbinado. Sugar is sugar. It doesn't matter the form. Honey is liquid sugar. Almost any kind of syrup cane syrup, corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup, maple syrup, these are all sugars. I'm also going to include in this group refined carbohydrates, carbohydrates that have had their fiber removed. So fiber slows down the absorption of food. When you remove that, it will get, you'll have a rapid rise in sugar and that's why I'm going to include them in this group. So white bread, white rice, white pasta, it's not a white thing, cauliflower is great, M&Ms, not so good. These foods all behave like sugar. Also in this group, by the way, is fruit juice, fruit juice concentrate. And when you put a fruit or a vegetable in a blender to make a smoothie, you keep the fiber, but you lose the roughage, the cellular structure of that fruit or vegetable. You need it to give yourself that healthy bacteria in your gut. So your mantra, be the blender. Have the whole fruit, the whole, the whole vegetable, not the juice or the smoothie, unless of course the exception would be if you are looking to gain weight or if you are looking, if you have some GI digestive issues, then a smoothie might be a better choice for you. People say to me, I don't eat a lot of sugar, but the average American includes about 22 and a half teaspoons of added sugar every day. So I thought that I'd show you where sugar is in your diet, even if you're not including regular soda, um, this is a good exercise because some people don't appreciate how much sugar is in the foods that they're eating. And this, by the way, is just a 12 ounce can of Coke. Many people are drinking a 20 ounce bottle. So this is just the 12 ounce can. And think about when I should stop as to how much sugar you think you'd get if you drank just this 12 ounce can. So here we go. Here's one teaspoon. I'm going to keep going. Here's two. 
Here's three. I did go to four. Here's five. Many people will stop me here and they'll say, that's it, but I'm going to keep going. Six, seven, I know, eight, nine. If you knew this, would you keep, would you have had it? Here's 10. So if I said to you, if you told me you were thirsty and I said, go ahead, have some, you'd think I lost it. But that's what you're going to get every time you drink this can of Coke. It comes to about here. If we are what we eat, anything you can use to take rust off a car, which this will do beautifully, I'm not sure if you want to put in you. But so be mindful of where sugar is in your diet. Look for the words that let you know you've had sugar in your, on your food label. Because we know that here's what's going to happen. Say you took in 2,000 calories in the course of a day. But most of your calories came from foods that behave like sugar. White bread, white pasta, white rice, a snicker bar. You just raised your blood sugar level, which means you raised a hormone called insulin. Many people are familiar with this hormone insulin as it connects to diabetes because one of the roles of, of insulin is it clears sugar from your blood. But insulin actually does many things. Insulin will store visceral fat. This is the fat that is, squeezes internal organs and increases chronic disease risk. It increases inflammation throughout the body. So you can't feel it. This is internal. So if you take 2,000 calories, but most of your calories are coming from these foods, you just triggered a myriad of reactions. Here's what's going to happen. Of your 2,000 calories, 500 of them will immediately get taken away and get stored as visceral fat because you raise the insulin. That's what insulin does. Now, your brain had been settling in at 2,000 calories. It was happy there, but it thinks you ate 1,500 because 500 got taken away and got stored as visceral fat. So it says to you, your brain says to you, I feel crappy. Go eat. That's a powerful hormonal message. You listen, you go eat, and you go get another 500 calories. But really, what did you just eat? 2,500 calories. So you start a cycle of eating and storing fat, eating and storing fat. It's not your fault. It's the food you're eating are causing you to behave this way. I hope this is making sense and resonating with you because insulin will go on and say, you know what? I've come so far, I can do better. And it does. To do better, insulin will block the hormone leptin. Leptin's a hormone that would have told you that you're full. This explains why you can go for a big pasta meal and you know you shouldn't, but you've got room for the cannoli. Bon appetito, floodgates stay open, and you're going to keep eating. Again, not your fault. It's these foods are doing this to you. And then insulin says, I've come so far. I want the trifecta. And it gets it. You come home at the end of the day, you're hungry, you're tired, bored, stressed, angry. And there's a loaf of French bread on your counter or maybe some muffins or cookies. And you eat them because they're there. And in that minute, gosh darn it, don't you feel better? You get that little rush, that little release, that buzz, because it raised a neurotransmitter in your brain called dopamine, and dopamine gives you a high. So to give yourself, the for insulin to give itself the trifecta, what it does is it diminishes your receptors for dopamine. So where one cookie did it for you before, before long, you're eating the whole putt ladder or you're eating a whole French baguette. You've got to eat more to get that same rise, that same rush. And it wasn't even the high you're looking for. You're looking for the high from exercising and letting those endorphins roll, from eating good, clean fuel and knowing that you gave your body the nutrients it needs. And you're, giving your, you're getting the high from getting the mulligan by being at cardiac rehab and from knowing that instead of getting older prematurely biologically, you can regress plaque and get younger. It doesn't get higher than that. So you say, not happening to me. I'm going to detox. I'm going to the subset of starches, which is fiber. And if you don't remember anything I ever tell you, here's the line that I want you always to hold. And that is, fiber is your friend. Fiber is the, na is the undigestible portion of food. It's nature's broom. It's going to sweep through your intestinal tract. It will take with it what it can along its path, including any potential carcinogens, and excrete it. So you want this sweeping to go on. Two kinds of fiber, soluble, insoluble. Soluble forms a gel or a paste. It will block or interfere with the absorption of cholesterol. Look at oatmeal. You add water, it forms that gel, that paste. It's a great example of a soluble fiber. Insoluble, nature's broom. Most foods 
have a combination of both soluble and insoluble. But in general, the fiber you'll get from fruit and vegetables different than the fiber you get from breads and cereals. I need you to have both in order to have an adequate intake. So I want you to have three fruit servings every day, at least two servings of vegetables every day, and eat the rainbow. Vary the colors of your fruit, vary the colors of your vegetables. They'll give you different antioxidants that are protective. Now, if you're on a weight loss program, the only way you'll be able to stay the course is if you feel like you had enough to eat. This is called caloric density. Ask yourself when you look at a food, does it have a lot of water and fiber? Because the water gives you volume, no calories in water. And fiber, it fills you up. So every time you sit down to eat, fill half your plate with vegetables that have a lot of water and fiber. We call them non-starchy veg vegetables. So think about if you like any of these. Do you like green beans? How about broccoli, asparagus? cauliflower. Look at all the water and the fiber in zucchini, in spinach, tomatoes, lettuce, cucumbers, onions, celery, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, eggplant, kale, unlimited sprouts as long as you're not in a sauce. Have the size of your fist. It could be more but at least protein. You need protein at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And the last quadrant of your plate should be a whole grain or high fiber starch. If you go from this video and you say, you know what, this fiber thing, that's the way to go. I can see that's what I need to do because fiber would slow down the absorption of food, keep my blood sugars nice and even and steady. That'll avoid any hormonal swings that result in infl inflammation. So you go from this video and you go get a big bowl of fruit and maybe you're snack on some um, cut up carrot and celery sticks and then for lunch maybe it, you have a big salad and some high fiber bread or cereal and some more fruit and then in the afternoon you have some popcorn and some veggies. If you're not used to eating a lot of fiber it is nature's broom and I'm going to know exactly where to find you, what room, because it's gonna, you're going to lose all the nutrients that you're working so hard to get. So make sure you add fiber gradually Drink a lot of water when you have fiber because you need to flush it through. Otherwise, it will form a, it will bloat you, distend you. It's a very uncomfortable feeling. So drink a lot of water. How do you know you're well hydrated? It's the color of your urine. Take a look. It should be clear. You should be able to read a newspaper through it. The deeper the color, the more dehydrated you are. Go get some water. Next time you return to the bathroom, it'll be an automatic feedback mechanism, and you should see it should get lighter. So drink enough water to flush this fiber through add it gradually. I also want you to eat, include three whole grains. Whole grains reduce inflammation throughout the body. When you eat the whole kernel, there are three parts to the wheat kernel, the bran, the endosperm, and the germ. And when you eat the whole kernel, you get the whole grain, which will give you phytonutrients. Those are just nutrients from plants. Vitamins, minerals, fiber, antioxidants. Whole grains are thought to reduce abdominal fat. Many people will argue it's your waist, even more than your weight, is a predictor for chronic disease. Whole grains will reduce that belly fat. Whole grains also reduce inflammation throughout the body. You want to include three whole grain servings every day. You'll know it's a whole grain by the word whole. So if it says on a loaf of bread, for example, it's made from wheat flour, that's not it. It has to have this word whole. It has to say whole wheat flour. Organic, no relevance here. Stone ground, they took a stone and literally rolled it over the wheat kernel. Sounds so much better than it is. Multigrain means parts of the kernel, but you need the whole intact kernel. Enriched means they stripped it. They added a few things back in, but they didn't give you all three parts. They didn't give you that whole intact kernel. That's what you need to be a whole grain. Now, ingredients in an ingredient list are listed in the order present. The item listed first is in the greatest amount, and then it goes in descending order. This word whole has to be listed first. If it's not first, you're going to go through a mound of white flour or sugar to get to a dusting of whole grain, and they can call it whole grain. So look for this word whole. It has to be first on the ingredient list. There are, however, a couple of foods that don't need the word whole, even though they are whole grains. Think about if you like any of these. Do you like oatmeal? brown rice, popcorn, whole corn is a whole grain, quinoa is a whole grain, and all the ancient grains 
are whole grain. So these are great ways for you to include whole grains every day and you're looking to include three servings every day. Now, we don't think of foods in terms of macronutrients. We think of them in terms of food. So while I love you to use the apps such as Lose It or My Fitness Pal or Rate Your Plate by the CDC, a very quick way for you to have a checklist so that you can assess whether or not your diet is balanced is to write a listing of foods by how we think of them in terms of foods. Fruit, vegetable, milk, starch, meat, and fat. And think about what you ate. For example, if you ate in the morning, you included a bowl of cereal with milk, then by the starch group, you would put a check for the cereal. And by the milk group, you'd put a check for the milk. At the end of the day, see, is there certain groups that you went over on and other groups you didn't include enough of? It will just give you a quick snapshot as to how you're doing in any changes that might need to be made. So include a variety of foods eat the rainbow. If you want to have more food for less, ask yourself, does this food have a lot of water and fiber? And you will certainly get to your goals. Thank you.